song I did which is called To Be Funky. So if you don't know me yet, I'm Mathieu Fizet. I'm the keyboard player of the Robot Jazz Band and I live in Quebec City, Canada and I do my own music. So uh, I'm gonna teach you about music in general but using my songs. So this song, uh, as the title suggests, it's a funk song or it's a funky song. At least it's my type of funk and um, it's also mixed with hip-hop and jazz or fusion jazz uh, it's maybe one of the most simple song I have um, in terms of harmony like there's one chord in this whole song the whole song is one chord because it's funk so it's it's basically just a groove and it's a kind of rhythm instead of being based on harmony. Of course you can have chord progressions in funk but you don't you don't always need that. Um, let's start with the clavinet part which is in my opinion a very important um, instrument in funk although you can also do that on the guitar but uh, I don't play guitar so I do it on the clavinet. So the, the, the rhythm and the, the part goes like this. And on and on. It's in A minor and basically the chord that is going on is A minor 7 although there is um, an F sharp so you could say it's a A minor 7 13 and then I do a very quick D so you could say it's that 11 but anyway it's A minor 7 with some little notes in there so so it starts on the low A so low A the A here with my left hand I'm just doing an octave then I'm doing F sharp and G and C. So that's the A minor 7 because the C is the minor 3rd, the G is the 7. Okay, I'm only doing two notes, but it's actually a, a minor 7 because the bass is on A, I have the minor 3rd, I have 7, and I don't need to play the 5th. The fifth is not really, it's, I mean, it's an important note in a chord, but it's not an important note to, to define a chord, unless it's a minor, uh, unless it's a flat five or a, a sharp five. But if, it's, if the five is, is natural, if it's a perfect fifth, it doesn't really need to be there. So, and then I'm doing, okay, I go to the D. And actually, while I'm explaining that, I'm kind of not sure about what I did on the album. Uh, because this kind of rhythm, this kind of part, is kind of improvised. I mean, it's like strumming on the guitar, like you don't really overanalyze what you're doing. So, I'm not sure if I did the E, which is the fifth, so sometimes I do it, but... Um, So it might be something like that. Uh, so that's basically one of the most important part of the song. And actually you'll see that there's not a lot of parts in that song. It's also simple in the production. Like there's not a lot of instruments going on. So that's the clavinet. Then we have the bass part. The bass, I actually played that on my micro chord. Uh, 
which is not plugged right now, but I did the bass on that uh, using a sound in the microcorg that is called chameleon. So I'm guessing it's in reference to Herbie and Cock Chameleon. The, song, the sound is very similar. But anyway, it's not plugged right now, so I'm just gonna play with the bass I have on the Nord. And as the chord suggested, it's just one note. So the rhythm is like one, two, three, four. That's the bass line. So it's basically just one note, it's the A, but I'm also doing kind of a ghost note on the G. And at the end of the four bar, you have, okay, which is kind of a bluesy line starting on D with the D sharp, down to C, back to A. And the rhythm, it's also it's always on the on the the, the quarter note, uh, sorry, the sixteenth note just before the one. So one, two, three, four. Okay, it's not on the one. It's just a little before. One, two, three, four. see when I show the drums that actually I break one rule that actually I want to talk about um, everybody think or a lot of people think that the bass should always follow the kick drums or the kick drums should always follow the bass it's not true in some styles of music in some songs in some grooves that's really cool but it's not always important and it's not always necessary and actually it could destroy a groove if you try to always put the kick and the bass together. Uh, one very obvious example of that is uh, dance music, disco music, like you know, the typical disco groove is just a kick on the on the quarter note, right? Boom, 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 boom. That's why we always say like boom, boom, boom. That's the disco vibe, right? The kick is always on the quarter note, but the bass line is not. And actually, a lot of the time, the bass would play the up, would play the, 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 the notes in between the kick. And sometimes it never play with the kick. And so that's one obvious example that sometimes you, if you want the groove, you should not play with the kick. And, and so my song, in To Be Funky, the kick and the bass line are actually almost never playing together. So I'll probably just show that in the next part of the video where I show the production, the mix. But anyway, that was basically the idea in, in the songs. Like I, I had the drum beat first, I had the groove first of the just the drums. And when I came up with the bass line, I wanted to play in between the kick drums not with the kick drum. Okay, so that being said, we have pretty much the whole uh, rhythm section covered. We'll do the drums later. Now, on top of that, uh, there's two things. There's the vocals and there's the keyboards, the keyboard melody, the, the lead. And the vocals are performed by me, and it's actually, uh, some, sometimes it's a vocoder, but sometimes it's, it's really my voice which I never did before, uh, and actually told everybody, all my friends, I told them, oh, I would never use my own voice, I would never sing with my own voice on, on any of my songs. But I did, because I like to contradict myself, which is why the album is called Contradictions. I always contradict myself. When I say I'm gonna do something, I do something else, and when I say I will never do something, I end up doing it. So uh, um, my music is full of that. So I perform the vocals, li uh, not live, but I perform the vocals myself and it's almost like a rap song, but it's funk rap, so it's, it's not like Eminem style, it's not Jay-Z style, I'm not that kind of rapper, I will never be this kind of rapper, 
but uh, I did kind of a, a Prince style rap or George Clinton from uh, Parliament Funkadelic. Like it's almost like talking but in rhythm and with a lot of attitude. And I, even though I use my real voice, I change my voice on purpose to, to sound more funky and more funny. And I did I did multi tracking and. Uh, Put some little bit of effects in there, but it's still my voice. Anyway, you'll see in the next part of the video. So there's that going on, and then there's the lead keyboard part, which is the most jazz uh, part of the song. So it's a melody inspired by Freedom Jazz Dance, which is a song by Eddie Aris. Uh, it's like a, a bebop song, but also kind of a fusion jazz. So I'm using a lot of uh, notes that are extensions of the chord, which is just one chord. It's, it's a, a minor seven, but I'm using a, a lot of extensions from that chord, creating complex harmony with the melody and chromatic uh, chromatic notes and some. Whatever, like I, I did a lot of stuff in that video. So here, here it is with the synth sound. <laughs> Just break it down because there's a lot of stuff going on. So let's put it in context. So we have the A or A minor seven going on at the, uh, below that, and then the, the melody is doing the arpeggio with the F sharp. So that makes it A minor thirteen uh, chord or arpeggio. So it starts with that, and then it goes to B, which is the ninth, so and then I do so just like kind of like a bluesy um, lick. So F, F sharp, F, E, D. So and then I go chromatic to E. again so it's a kind of a quirky melody yeah. line here which is but on the synth I use a pitch band so and about that actually um, about pitch banding on the keyboard I might be a little mean here but I think a lot of keyboard players don't use a pitch band as they should or they don't even use the pitch band and they use the modulation wheel to create vibrato and it can be cool but it's it's you should be able to do your own vibratos and, and uh, on the pitch band so for example if I want to do a 
very, very small vibrato, I can do it. Boy. I can go wild with it, but I can do all the kind of... And of course I can do silly stuff like that, but uh, I think vibrato control and pitch band control for a keyboard player is extremely important because you can really sound cheesy or just bad if you don't use the pitch band properly. Um, and actually I have to say that the pitch band on the Nord keyboards are the best pitch band you can get. That's actually the whole reason why I have a Nord keyboard. Uh, before, like I started on the Korg, uh, I had a Triton LE, the Triton Extreme, and then I was thinking of uh, going to Nord, but I was not sure if I wanted uh, uh, like the Nord Lead or the Moog uh, Little Fatty. So I, I had to choose between the Moog Little Fatty or the Nord Lead, uh, Nord Lead 2X. And obviously the Moog sound great. I mean, it's an analog keyboard, so I was like, oh, well, I like the sound of the Moog, but really what made me choose the Nord is the pitch band. Because it's just the best pitch band you can get, really, I think. I've, I've tried a lot of different keyboards in my life and this is the pitch, best pitch band because you can do all the little there's no uh, I think they call that a, a, a dead zone in like in other keyboards the pitch band have a dead zone so if you just touch it a little bit it doesn't do anything you have to go a certain distance to actually activate the pitch band which is stupid in my opinion you should be able to do the very little variations, just like you could do on the violin or a guitar. Like, that's important to me. So, that's uh, my comment about pitch bending on a keyboard. Um, so, in the context of that melody, you'll notice that I'm doing a combination of small pitch bending, like small vibratos, and more extreme ones. So. <laughs> this F sharp and doing a little too bad. Just enough to make this, the note sustain and be beautiful. And then at the end, when I do the... I go extreme. So I do the pitch band and then I do a very large vibrato on the C. So, yes, you can do that with a modul modulation wheel and you can program your vibrato to be wide or fast or whatever, but it's programmed, so you cannot really do it in real time with what you play. So, if you're a keyboard player and you play synthesizers, practicing your pitch band technique is extremely important. Okay, so um, I think that's all the parts in the song. There's really not so much going on, so now we're just going to go in the mix and show the drums and everything else. All right, so now let's talk about the mix and the production of that song, which you will see is not so complex. It's actually one of the smallest sessions I have. Uh, start with the drums. That's the only thing I did not talk about yet. So the drums like this. Pretty, pretty much the, the, the same groove the whole time and um, it's a combination of electronic synth drums and sampled real drums but it's all programmed or played on the keyboard and you know um, because I play drums for real but on this album I wanted to have everything either programmed or played on the keyboard and have different sounds so let's break it down. Um, obviously, we have the kick. This is electronic. This is from Ultra Beat, uh, the Nouveau Disco Kit. I like this kit, um, or at least the kick is cool. Then here we have a, a real, s real snare sample. And th this actually, this roll was programmed, believe it or not. Um, I guess, yeah, I just did 
a lot of very fast and very soft hits. And that do like. And it, oh, there's also a symbol in there, a right symbol. So this is easy drummer. So I'm just using the the right symbol in the snare. This is combined with an electronic snare and kind of clap. This is ultra beat hip hop kit. Then we have the hi hat combined with a shaker. This is also ultra beat. And then on then there's like I think there's something here. Oh, it's just a kind of a crash symbol with an, uh, with some effects on it, uh, vibe and echo, yeah. So that's the symbol hit. And then this is a symbol from a song I'm not gonna say. And uh, I guess the challenge is, can you guess what song I took that from? Okay, that's all I'm gonna show. <laughs> this is not that that was not originally sounding like that. I changed the sound quite a lot. Uh, I think I did some pitch shifting and some tempo change and some other effects and uh, extreme EQ to cut some frequencies I didn't want. But anyway, uh, to be honest, that was a song that really inspired the groove. And then the groove changed and the whole song changed and so it's not recognizable anymore but it started from one famous song and I guess the the name of the track can kind of give, give it away, Gory Sample, but anyway, if you can guess this, what song I sample, just let me know. Um, then we have the bass. So just I, like I showed earlier, this is a very simple bass line. This was played on the micro chord with the sound that is kind of like Chameleon from Herbie and Cock. Now as I mentioned earlier, the bass and the kick are almost never playing together. So let's just listen to the kick and the bass together. So there, the kick and the bass are never playing together, and I think that's what makes the groove happen because they complete each other instead of playing the same thing. They actually play different parts that really make the groove complete. So let's listen to the whole drums and the bass. If the bass was playing the same thing as the kick, I think it would be boring. It would be less like... It would not groove the same. They would not be the same kind of anticipation rhythm going on. So that's why um, sometimes the bass should not play what the kick is doing. Then we have the clavinet. Which is actually combined, it's like a clavinet sound and a synth sound together. Nothing fancy in the mix, like just compression, some EQ, nothing special. Then we have the Robo Jazz lead, so the melody. Pretty much like I showed earlier, and now we get into the vocal. Oh, well, there's the keyboard solo, which is here. It's very, uh, it's a kind of a rock sound, and this is actually the micro chord. Um, the sound is literally called Smack It, and um, I think I did some, yeah, little phase and chorus, or maybe the, actually the phase is not even on yet, so just some, a little bit of chorus on the, on that. Now we get to the vocals, so I'm gonna get naked for you and show you my voice without the rest of the music, so that's what I did. You don't know what it takes, you don't know what it takes, you don't know what it takes.
So obviously you can see there's three tracks. So one in the middle and two, like one totally right, one totally left, and one in the middle. And uh, I did some EQ compression, obviously, and a uh, little effect, yeah, chorus. But that's all. Like it's pretty much my voice, actually. Not so much effect on it. You don't know what it takes. You don't know. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's one of the part. Then you have this part here, which is a little more affected. To be funky. To be funky. So on this I have a ring shifter, which honestly I don't know what it does, <laughs> but it's cool. Um, to be funky. If I take it out. To be funky. To be funky. Wait it. To be funky. To be funky. Like there's a delay in there, but it's not just a delay. There's some weird shit going on. Anyway, it's cool. And then we have vocoder because uh, that's kind of what I do now. You don't know what it takes. You don't know what it takes. And this is triple tracks. Uh, same concept: one in the middle, one left, one right. And uh, actually, to be honest, for the vocoder, it doesn't really act like real vocals. Like for for real acoustic vocals, doing double, triple tracking and panning, it really makes a big difference. But for the vocoder, it's less of a difference. Like if I if hear just the, the mono version, and then with other tracks, I mean, there's something happening, but it's not as extreme as uh, acoustic vocals. And I guess that's just due to how a vocoder sound, you know, it's not my acoustic voice, it's electronic. And, and that's that's it really, there's nothing else in that song, so if you want to hear the whole thing, just go on Pancamp. So that's it for this week, for this song, um, I hope you still enjoy those videos, and um, there, will, there will be more, and uh, don't forget to go listen to the actual song on Bandcamp and uh, you can also uh, check out the other songs that I released earlier and the new album will come out April 16 with all these songs and more so um, let's keep in touch see you next time bye <laughs>